the Z Modeler brush active, hover over a poly and press spacebar to open up the Z Modeler poly menu. With the Z Modeler poly menu open, you'll see a series of actions, targets, and then corresponding modifiers. Locate the Q mesh action. When you first load up the Z Modeler brush, the default polygon operation will be Q mesh A poly. So the action will be set to Q mesh and the target will be set to a single poly. Now to use the Q mesh action, just hover over a poly and click and drag, and that poly will be extruded outward. Now, as you first use this brush, you may notice that it's quite a bit like an extrude, but the Q mesh action is actually a lot more powerful. So if I come over this poly here and Q mesh out, you'll notice as soon as I start dragging, it will fuse with the polygon next to it. And while it's still fusing, I can move my mouse and it will control the angle of offset to the other poly. So this functionality allows you to come through and quickly extrude areas of your model out and weld them together automatically. So if I hold down shift and smooth, you'll see that they are completely welded. Now this process works really well with some of the other default settings in the Zmodeler brush. So if I hover over an edge, the default setting right now is insert an edge loop. So I'm just going to insert some edges here to assist with the usage of the Q mesh action. I'm just going to cut a few in here. Now, if I want to subtract an area on my model, the Q mesh action will also be able to handle that. So unlike an extrude, if I click on this poly here and click and drag down, it will actually extract or remove that actual poly from the model there. And while it's actually subtracting the volume of that geometry, it's also closing the holes that would have been left behind. So this process will allow you to come through and subtract different areas of your model. So if I want to come through and just move these parts out of the way, I can just click and drag and those polygons will be removed. If I find out that I did in fact want those polygons there, I can simply come back and just Q mesh one of these polys and drag that back into place. So with this, you can just kind of come through and just kind of make shapes or modify areas on your geometry very fast with this brush. Now the Q mesh action also has a bunch of varying modifiers down here. These first ones are determining how many steps are going to be generated when you actually perform the Q mesh action. So right now it's set to align 10th step. So if I just Q mesh this part out, and now I Q mesh an adjacent polygon, you'll see that it's giving me up to 10 steps in which I can get that angle to generate. If I undo that and then go hold spacebar and get back into my Z modeler poly menu, if I change this to a half step, and now Q mesh the poly there, it's going to only give me two steps. So it's going to give me the half step and then the full step. So the settings through here will determine the step size of the actual alignment. Below that you have a series of modifiers. So you have the option by default, which is one side poly, and then you have an option such as multi-sides by brush. What this is going to do is as you perform the Q mesh action, it's going to generate edge loops along the surface of the model based on your actual brush size. So right now with the draw size of 19 on the surface, I'm getting about this many rows generated. If I change my draw size to a larger size here and then Q mesh that poly, you're going to see that I'm going to get larger steps. So this is great if you just want to create rows of even topology across your model. This is great for environment building where you need to make pillars or columns and have them all divided up evenly across an area. The other options down here, you have the attraction settings, which will determine how quick the fusion process actually happens. Then you have other options such as triangle snap and extended snap. The triangle snap will allow you to create triangles on the surface of your model. Right now, by default, if I just Q mesh these guys out, it's only going to give me quadded surfaces along my geometry. If I undo that and turn on enable triangle snap, upon clicking, the first actual step it will generate will be a triangle. So this will allow you to generate triangle shapes as you're modeling. If you don't want to have any triangles generated on your mesh while you're using the Q mesh section, just make sure this is turned to disable. Next, you have the option to disable or enable the extended snap. With the extended snap disabled, if I hover over poly and click and drag, it will always stop at the height of the polygon beside it. If I undo that and hit spacebar to go back into the Z modeler poly menu and turn on enable extended snap, now when I click on this poly here to the Q mesh action and click and drag, I'll be able to overshoot that actual edge. So this will allow you to get shapes generated like so across your mesh. Now the Q mesh action has a few more little hitting features. So one option the Q mesh brush has is the ability to actually take a face and move it instead of apply the Q mesh action. 
So using the temporary polygroup by holding Alt, I can quickly just tag some faces here. And then if I apply a Q-Mesh action like normal, it will just Q-Mesh that entire area. Now, if instead I wanted to do a move action, instead of a Q-Mesh action, if I just click and while dragging out, I hold Shift, it will now perform a move action. So this is handy as you're using the actual Q-Mesh brush here to say you just want to move different parts of your mesh. So instead of having to actually switch the another Z modeler poly action of move, I can just use the Q mesh action to apply the move process. Another option that the actual Q mesh action has is the ability to clone or detach a face. So if I hover over a poly here on the back side, I'm just going to apply that temporary poly group again, holding Alt, and I'm just going to apply it to this entire back surface. Well, say I want to take this whole area here and detach it from my model as another area of polygons. So if I come over this poly here and just Q mesh by just clicking and dragging, and while I'm performing this action, if I hold control, it will actually detach that actual face. Now one thing nice about this detach is that it does not create a hole in your model, but literally just detaches and copies that face. After that face has been copied, I can now apply a Q mesh action again to give it thickness. So continue using the Q mesh action along with other actions like the insert edge loop to come through and define different shapes and forms on your actual model.